Bye. Recording. Oh, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. as long as okay. it doesn't fall off. So. They're, they're going to scramble to find something. What? Can you stand on the chair and see? <laughs> this is the first. We've never actually had a problem where we had the speaker couldn't see over the podium. That's true, yeah. All righty. So, PC1. So we need to get Do you have to do something to cut him over to the to the screen? Hey, yeah, he's got slides. Yes, yeah. Um I need to check this out and find it and see if it's it should Oh, no, 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 no. oh, there you go. Right, cool. there it just go. sometimes takes a few minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. 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 You can do that. Hello. Hello. Good afternoon. The title of my talk for you today is InfoSec from the Mouth of Babes. Today I'm going to talk to you about three things. First, why should you teach kids about InfoSec? Second, how can you teach kids about InfoSec? And third, what can kids teach you about InfoSec? But before we begin, but, what, but before we begin, let me tell you a little bit about myself. Who am I? I am Ruben Abishai Paul, but my friends call me Rapstar. When I was two years old, I was recognized as America's most be beautiful baby. <laughs> when I was seven years old, I was honored to receive the title of being the young, youngest Shaun Do Kung Fu black belt in America. And I'm from Texas, so don't mess with me. <laughs> Today, I'm founder and CEO of Prudent Games, Inc. We make entertaining games so that our customers learn while they play. Some of the games I have written are Cracker Proof, a game about strong passwords. Crack Me If You Can, a fun way to learn about brute force attacks. And Shuriken Math, a game where ninjas teach you math. Let's play a little game. Who can guess my password? I love you too, but that's not the password. <laughs> yes, that's India's national animal and Oracle's default password, but that's not the password. It's not on there. Admin. Yes, that's what I want to be on your systems, but that's not the password. Maybe. Maybe not. <laughs> Hey, hey, that's Coley's default password, not mine. <laughs> that's not eight characters long, so that's not the password. Actually, none of these are my password, because my password is strong password. I use my own app, Cracker Proof, to build my password. Why don't you check it out in the App Store? When I grow up, I want to be a cyber spy. It all began when my first grade teacher asked me what you want to be when you grow up, and this is what I drew. This is me chilling out. This is my SQL injection hack going through the cloud. And this is a firewall looking much like all of yours. And this is the other computer pwned. Now let's start with why should you teach kids about InfoSec? We used to live in a world that was physically insecure with wars that were fought with bombs such as the fat boy. But today is equally insecure, or even more, because somebody with a fat finger could trigger a bomb even more deadly than the fat boy. 
We now also live in a world with new technologies and millions of apps, which kids like me and your kids use. Here's an example of my little brother, Itai, busy on his business call. <laughs> so with all this new technologies and apps, you should teach your kids to use it carefully and securely. Another reason why you should teach your kids about InfoSec is because schools don't teach it. I think schools don't teach it because they are not aware of its importance. It could also be because they think that all hackers are bad, which is not necessarily true. How many of you are bad? Don't show your hands. <laughs> now, let's look at how can you teach kids about InfoSec. First, get them the right tools. My mom gave me my first computer, which was a hand-me-down. It would take forever to download, install, or compile anything, and run as slow as Dr. Nefario's scooter. Then my parents got me this other computer, which runs as fast as this Lamborghini, which hopefully will be my future car, unless Dr. Charlie Miller hacks it. <laughs> Second, make it fun for kids. Kids learn by having fun. Let them think that they're playing a game. My dad once asked me to check if the Linux headers were ready. This is what I typed. Is headers ready? It responded by saying, is command not found? So I had to bash the computer a few times. It still would not accept my command. So I asked the computer some question, what? It still would not accept my command. This was driving me crazy. And I told this to the computer, but it still would not accept my command. So I said, bye. It was fun and I learned about some valid Linux commands, no, actually some invalid Linux commands, and a little bit about fussing. <laughs> and finally, let me tell you about what can kids teach you about InfoSec. How many of you have children that listen to you the very first time? <laughs> you need patience to bring up kids. You also need patience to be good at InfoSec. How many times should you try? You should try until you get what you want. My mom, I asked, once asked my mom what's the difference between a good hacker and a bad hacker. She said a good hacker always listens to his mama, and a bad hacker doesn't. No, okay, the real difference between a good hacker and a bad hacker is a good hacker always plans, prepares, and perseveres. And a bad hacker, well, doesn't. Uh, another thing that you can, another thing that kids can teach you is that, is about social engineering. Kids are the best social engineers, followed by puppies, and possibly the social engineering toolkit by Dave Kennedy and his trusted sec team. <laughs> I've, I've talked for a while now, but let me put my money where my mouth is and show you that this eight years old kid does not just talk the talk, but also can walk the walk. I'm going to show you today is going to be a. <laughs> there. <laughs> yeah. What I'm going to demonstrate to you first is a Java applet attack using Social Engineering Toolkit. We are going to use a. We're going to do a Java applet attack, and we're going to clone a site. Uh, we're going to clone a site, and we are going to. Uh, we're going to set our payload so that the uh, Windows 8 target machine can connect back to the attacker box in Kali. And once we have that, we are going to get root access on the other system. Oh, and we also need our IP address. Should be 192.168.1.70. I don't see 
to the one six eight. So say no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now to the IP address. You missed the one six eight. So you can see over there. We are going to make our own self-signed certificate applet. What's your first and last name, Facebook? The org organizational unit, IT. IT. What's the name of the city or location, Cambridge? And Massachusetts. U.S. Yes. Our, our site for today we're going to clone is going to be Facebook.com. Now we are injecting the Java applet into a newly cloned website. Gonna use. We are going to wrap the payload with the Chicago grenade so that it antivirus detection doesn't catch it. And our port of listener is going to be four four three. Might take a little bit. So generally, we would send an email to the target machine, but or all our victims. But today, for time pur time purposes, we're not going to do that. We're just going to assume that they clicked on the link. It's waiting for the fake website to kind of load. There you go. <laughs> so we're connecting back to the fake website. Yay, Facebook. <laughs> so what do most people do when they see this applet? <laughs> well, just to show you. Facebook.com, IT, IT, Cambridge, and Massachusetts, and U.S. I'm going to run this application. <laughs> so now, we, we got a metal printer shell opened up. Yeah, it's gonna give get some more sessions opened. We're gonna start an interaction with session one. So we can do we can do um the right. Oh, there. There. So now, so we can do a hash dump, we can do get system, we can do webcams, we can do key scan, which we're going to do today. We can do, we're going to, we can reboot the system. At this point, it's game over for the other computer. But we 
I'm going to do a key scan, as I told you. So, we're going to migrate from whatever process we're in now to Notepad process. So, once Notepad's open, we migrate. Yes. Oopsie. Anybody sees the notepad process? There, there you go. Twenty one sixty. So now we're migrating migrating to process so this was our old process five, three two five six so now that we have this you're gonna type something in so we started the key scan sniffer and <laughs> so now, me and my dad found this, we discovered something new, that if you restart the Windows 8 target box, then then you don't even have to click the run accept button it will get a meta predator shell from from that system so just to show you so all so i don't know if that is known or not so i'm sorry i don't know if that's known it may be known but we found that when you restart the the box the when we when we, what we found was when we restart the the, the target box uh, and you leave Kali running with the MetaSpreader meta instance. So Egypt, if you know, tell us what's happening. Um, as soon as you restart the box, it, it sends the payload again, and this time it doesn't even prompt the user uh, for, the, for the applet to, to run. So it automatically, it's like almost like an advanced persistent threat where you can have you know, persistent access to the system. And if you restart this and he goes to 192, over there, it says the metapredator sessions have all been killed, right? So it's all dead. Uh, just by doing that, it doesn't even ask for a prompt for the user to click. But then you get owned very soon. If, uh, let's see if that works. Because if you notice, it goes to Facebook. Facebook. And then give it a second. Then. And it actually moved to See, Facebook, sending stage. But the stage is sending again. So you own the system every time the reboot. So. So he doesn't ask you for it. Yeah. Okay, but there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Boned! <laughs> oh, you can start. Thank you. I want to thank my God, Jesus Christ, for the gifts he has given me. I want to thank the organizers of this conference for giving me this opportunity, and I want to thank you all for coming to hear me speak. As my dad's friend Durko would say, hack all the things, yeah. drink all the booze. No, actually, don't drink at all. Actually, no, don't drink at all. My contact information is ruben at prudentgames.com. If you want to invite me to your next talk, I can even do keynotes, and I'm not talking about the Apple product. Any questions? <laughs> Any questions?
Uh, why do I have Spider-Man? Why do I have Spider-Man on my laptop? Because with great power comes great responsibility and hacking skills. <laughs> I start started hacking a few, I think a year ago. Now, it looks like you're getting into the games too, and they're going to be security conscious games, right? Yes. Like where you want to, is that where your passion is, to make security, to, to present that knowledge? Yeah. So, we're, uh, we're going to keep on making uh, games like this for like, Cracker Proof, for example, that's about strong passwords and crack me if you can. That's a game about brute force attacks. We don't know what our next one is going to be, but it's coming out soon. Where can we find Pretty Games at? Uh, you can find it on the internet. You can search it up on Facebook. Uh, Printinggames.com. Yes, I would so certainly. <laughs> yes, I would certainly recommend hacking for kids. I would certainly recommend this for kids, and everybody else. <laughs> All the way in the back. I haven't done that yet, but we might. I might do that, but we don't know for sure. All the way in the back. Yes, I would certainly recommend that. Yes. I certainly recommend for you to teach your kids since schools don't teach it. But I po positively encourage that you tell your kids' schools to start an InfoSec class. So are you, uh, is your app also available on Android? Uh, not yet. I haven't learned Android programming yet, but I should. should. Get on it. <laughs> <laughs> Raising hand in the back. Yes, that's what that's what that's what I just said. That you should, uh, all of you should encourage your kid, child school to get an infosec class after school. Thank you.